I want to speak to you about the wonderful feast day of All Saints, which we just celebrated on the 1st of November. And it struck me for the first time how apropos this feast day is to be the number one feast day of the school. With Saint, the Feast of St. Therese, October 1st and November 1st, that this should be our feast day at St. Therese Carmelite School. Because after all, what, who are we? We are called to be the saints. All Saint, in All Saints Day, we celebrate the art of arts, the greatest art of all. God's spectacular beauty shining brightly in the souls and lives of his closest friends, the saints. There is nothing more beautiful than the beauty of holiness, living life to the full, flourishing in God's friendship and being free in God's freedom. There's a beautiful story of one of the great American saints in the making, Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. And he gave a beautiful retreat on our patroness, the amazing Therese. And in it, he gives this really cool story. He says, I have a friend who spent 14 years in a communist prison, undergoing all kinds of torture and trauma. When he got out of prison, came across a little boy. And in this little boy, coming across this little boy in the street, he said to him, do you believe in Jesus Christ? The little boy said, no, I don't. Well, why don't you? Well, he said to my friend, you believe Christ is God, don't you? Yes. Well, said the little boy, God can do many things. God made elephants, and big elephants made little elephants. God made roses, and big roses made little roses. Big monkeys, God made monkeys, and big monkeys made little monkeys. And I think that if Jesus is God, he ought to be able to make other Jesuses. And I've never met one. My father's an alcoholic. My mother, take, my mother is always working and with her friends and never has time for me. Shh, nobody's ever done a good thing to me in my life. So I don't believe Jesus is God because I've never met another Jesus. Now, maybe this is what we are all supposed to be and what the little flower Therese intended that we should be, little Jesuses, undergoing our passions, our cross, spreading goodwill and kindness and merciful love, just as he did. The Lord calls us to be holy as he is holy. And the reality is that there is only one holy one. It's him. To desire to be holy is to want to be made whole. To recognize that we are broken and we are meant to be whole. Holy one with God and holy who we are each created to be in the beauty of his likeness. To be holy is to be fully human fully alive, fully free, and perfectly you. To do and be you to the max in him, with him, and through him. To be a saint doesn't mean we have to be the best at everything or at anything. But it does mean that we give our best to him in everything. That is, whatever we do, we strive to do it with our whole heart for his glory. Not for vanity, not for power, popularity, or money. 
Now, as a student, it's kind of dangerous to just strive to get by and get a C in class. To make getting a C your aim is a low standard. When our aim is low and we don't strive high, have high hopes, the likelihood of our failure increases. I once had a teacher who would jokingly say to his students, don't worry, be happy. D's get degrees. When that approach is a person's overall attitude, not only to school, but life, the chance of success is slim. In the A to, F, A to F standard grading scale, A, B, C, D, F, have you ever wondered what happened to the E? The E gets jumped over. Does an E for effort count in striving to succeed in the school of life? That is, when our effort amounts to just having, just having good intentions and always postponing taking care of business to someday, always postponing taking care of business to mañana, but never getting around to it, does that pay the bills? Uh-uh. It doesn't. That kind of effort of half measures Settling for the minimum required, the least amount expected to just get by, gets a person nowhere in living up to our potential. None of us want to let our life go to waste. So for that reason, we've got to invest in our faith. Use it or lose it. We've got to snap out of the hypnosis and keep the focus. What is our focus? What is the standard we live by? Christ Jesus' face is the focus of our faith. He is our number one standard, the image we are made in and no other. He is the numero uno model we strive to follow. Not comparing ourselves to anyone else, not trying to be someone we're not, and not succumbing to just do what everybody else is doing. Therese, my favorite saint of our, after our Blessed Mother, says holiness consists in being who he wills us to be, not to be a Xerox copy of someone else. We are called to be real, not phony not posers. We are called to be our true selves in the fullness of God's love, not fake friends of Jesus, but genuine ones. Again, Archbishop Sheen says, judge the Catholic Church not by those who barely live by its spirit, but by those who live closest to it. The saints reflect the true face of Jesus and the soul of the church. Jesus alone has supreme authority to separate the real ones from the fakes. It is he who has the power to see to it that the real ones are going to prevail. The real ones are not those who didn't make any mistakes, but those who knew how to learn and rise from them. The real ones are those who have not bought into the lies, but are lit and legit in his eyes, most inspired by the squad of his saints on fire with the blaze of glory from above. In them we see on full display the realest expressions of authentic greatness, real heroes, the true friends of God who have the, who have the most clout with Jesus. They're the best suited to inspire, teach, and lead us in the one thing necessary, 
the art of arts, living life to the full in the beauty of Jesus' abundant love and mercy. It is he who himself who is honored and loved in his saints. They are a continuation of his life, and their witness and intercession in turn inflame us to live in the fullness of his friendship. The saints are people like all of us. Many of them came out of great sins, but by repentance, their lives were transformed. They received new life, true life. Holiness does not consist in not making mistakes or never sinning. It's not being somehow superhuman or having outstanding talents or some prestigious status. It's simply the, ob the obedience of faith that does not rely on our own qualities, but allows our God to bestow his greatness on us by the sheer grace of his love as pure gift. Holiness knows that it's only in service and self-surrender in dying to ourselves that we can truly find ourselves. And holiness grows with our capacity for conversion, repentance, a willingness to begin again, to start fresh, and above all, with the capacity to forgive, be forgiven, and when possible, reconciliation. We see in them what it means to thrive and flourish, to arise and soar in a radical relationship with the Lord whose redemptive love and mercy knows how to bring miracles out of miseries. It is when we, we ourselves have personally undergone life's hard knocks and crises that our perspectives and priorities become purified and our faith matures. We begin to grow up in him. Our desires for the things of the world and the ways of it begin to fade. And there arises a new spiritual thirst and attraction, a desire to surrender ourselves completely to him and to want more than anything to be free in his freedom. To conclude, again with a quote from Archbishop Sheen, this is the choice before us, either to revolutionize the world and break under it, or revolutionize ourselves and remake the world. The only true revolution, the only real remedy for, heal, for the healing of our troubled times and wounded world is the revolution of holiness, the art of arts, to become saints, not necessarily canonized, but consumed by the desire to surrender everything of our faith in life to become more and more converted in his image and likeness, free in his freedom, and on fire with the dazzling glory of his love to the full. As we celebrate this Eucharist, we pray, may Jesus give us the humility of San Martin de Porres to live in the light of his love to the max and not settle for lax.